So uh, maybe with that, Andre, we're actually going to carry on and, and talk a That's bit a about, segue, uh, yeah. you, you know, a good segue to uh, <laughs> the long-term investing and those long-term liabilities that, uh, that, uh, that you have. Well, th thanks, Donna, and thanks for Deloitte for having me. It's a, it's a real privilege to be here. So every five years or so, uh, one of the global uh, consulting firm is doing a survey of the trends in the institutional uh, shareholders world. Uh, and um, it, it's amazing how from sur one survey to the other, all those trends remain very stable. If you look at five years ago, the, the one that are done today, and I, I suspect the one that will be done in five years, the main themes remain uh, we need to have more active management. We need to do more things internally. Uh, and we look to uh, create more value from an operational perspective. Uh, but what surprised me is that uh, at each time of those survey, the macro context and the economic context is very different. And therefore, I, I wonder if there's just inertia in the system. And as a long-term uh, institutional investor, what do I need to do differently? Uh, you just look at the, the current environment that we are going through right now. And just to take a few examples, it's a, it's a fairly challenging political environment, uh, it, you know, <clears throat> irrespective of how entertaining the U.S. primaries and the uh, ensuing presidential race is going to be, I think it's creating a lot of uncertainty as to what's going to happen to the first economic power in the world. You have the June 23rd uh, Brexit uh, uh, referendum, uh, who may actually change the face of Europe. Uh, and here, closer to home in Canada, we have a government that has made a decision to uh, put us in, in uh, uh, deficit territory uh, for uh, the foreseeable future. Uh, and the impact of that decision, uh, you know, the ramification of that decision is not, uh, you know, uh, as yet to be proven. So uh, in that background and uh, in uh, also an environment where the interest rates are very low and from Mark Carney to the CDO Institute, everybody seemed to agree that we're going to remain in that low environment uh, for a long time, but there's lots of volatility. And, you know, uh, a few weeks ago, Goldman predicted that the Fed would hike the rates four times. Uh, and at the, the same week, uh, Bridgewater came out and saying, no, we're going into negative interest rate territory in the U.S. So all this to say that uh, despite the trends in, among the institutional shareholders who seem to be very stable, we live in a very different economic environment. Uh, and we, there's huge volatility in, in, in trying to predict and trying to find the right asset classes. So what does long term mean exactly? Um, well, I think we need to look at our portfolio and really realize that about 70% of our portfolio is really in, in short term investment. And quite frankly, it's a little bit how we are compensating our people because we need to compensate them in a short period of time uh, because nobody's going to wait 25 years to you know, get their bonus. Uh, you, need, you, can w you can work a little bit with the measurement period, but then it becomes an interesting view of people coming in in the middle of the measurement period. Uh, so all these factors really uh, affect the definition and the notion of long-term investment. So my view is that we, we look at our portfolio, we focus on certain activity, in our case principally real estate and, and infrastructure, uh, and focus our long-term effort on those assets, trying to get assets that uh, either come to the market very uh, rarely uh, or that are must-own assets for our portfolio. But even within those categories, I think that you need to be aware of the cycle. And you know, uh, you, you look at the recent uh, deal at the London City Airport. Uh, well, if somebody is willing to offer you at the top of the cycle top money for that airport, uh, maybe you're more of a seller than a buyer. Uh, although I will confess that we were in the rest for, in the race for buying for buying that asset. <laughs> so, and I think the main driver for the rest of our portfolio as adapting short term versus medium term versus long term is innovation. I think it's a huge, uh, 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 it's something that is very different than a few years ago, the pace at which things are changing. Uh, and we just have to look at the transportation world, what the changes are being done right now. And I, you know, I have no crystal ball. I don't know if they will have an impact uh, in a year, within three years, within five years, within 10 years. 
but certainly those changes are, are much more rapid than uh, they used to be. Uh, what does that mean for CPP, uh, for PSP? Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that a lot. Uh, a little. <laughs> I, I still quite uh, get the, the letter confused. Sometimes I spend 10 years of my life there. So, and I'll just say that they are our own uh, because of our funding requirements, because of the uh, risk tolerance of our stakeholders. Uh, but uh, you know, for private asset, we're going to try to be looking at asset that we can hold for a longer period of time and, and still, you know, be flexible and make sure that we have the right, uh, the, the, we have the right cycles um, and, uh, you know, have the right governance model. We were talking about the difference between the public and the, the, uh, the private. I spent most of my career in the, in the private, so I know that model really well. And I, I think that if possible, there's something that the public companies should borrow from the, the private world. Certainly, uh, the the speed and the ease of execution uh, on the uh, the the part of the private companies, uh, where we really are an owner and we can decide among the owners uh, in a consortium that is often no more than two or three people. Uh, change in management, change in strategy, change in operational models, uh, but also you know the, the time that the people spend on strategy, and it's very rare that a week goes by without a private equity owner talking to the CEO of the company um, on strategy, and I think that that's uh, and instead of focusing on compliance, which I think to use the, uh, Wes's uh, expression, the system has created that it forces the boards of public company to uh, focus on compliance. On the, on the public side, I'd say that uh, ESG issues for the long term are very important and without uh, talking to all of the one maybe on the next slide uh, that, that are there. I, I would emphasize so wh why a few of them matter for long term. I think board diversity and renewal uh, is, is a key thing for us. Uh, not because, uh, as our prime minister said, it's 2016. It's not only because it's 2016. It's not because it's politically correct to have diversity, but it, because it addresses uh, a, a way of getting to much better decision making process uh, and making sure that you have the right skill set uh, around the board. And health and safety, and we've seen you know, some disaster mostly in the oil and gas, I think that that can have a huge impact on the reputation of institutional uh, shareholders uh, like ours and uh, that's why we need to pay a lot more uh, attention and put more emphasis in the future on that, uh, on that element. So.